My pregnancy was very, very smooth. All of the ultrasounds, the follow-ups, um, everything expecting to be a very healthy baby. From the moment we got into the hospital, we were both very excited. You know, I had just rushed from work to get in there. She was already there set up. You know, they had started inducing her. She was happy taking selfies and, you know, just being really cheerful. And yeah, I mean, it was an exciting um, mood. As they started inducing me, um, I wasn't dilating. I got a fever all of a sudden. You know, they actually had to talk to us about possibly getting a C-section. The C-section discussion happened, and then they said, actually, we have to go right now. When we go to these C-sections, it's usually because the baby inside the mom is having difficulty and the OBs were worried about it. They got her out and, you know, I thought a little bit strange. She seemed a little pale to me, but it's, I've never seen babies before, so I don't know. It's just that once they cut the cord away from mama, Kyla became very sick. It was really obvious she was very dependent on her mama. I mean, he brought Kyla to me and said, oh, you know, he wouldn't let me hold her or anything like that, but it sounded like, look, we have to, you kiss her and we have to go. Kind of sense of urgency. Kyla was not taking care of her airway and she needed an airway, so I unfortunately had to put a tube down her in order to breathe for her. Sometimes when babies are very sick, the body itself starts to want to revert back to how it was when it was inside the mom. Uh, we call it fetal circulation. And she started reverting back that way. The blood pressure in her lungs went very high. It was hard for her heart to pump blood into her lungs and put her on a special ventilator called an oscillator. She was on just maximal, maximal support. The final one that was really hard was ultimately they came back and said, okay, um, you know, the ventilators, they're not gonna work. We're maxing out the settings on that. Um, We'll, we'll need to try something else, uh, something called ECMO. There was really no choice, you know, it was, these are all the risks, but if not, she's not going to make it. This is the last chance for her survival. And Robert actually called us and he said that um, despite all the things they were doing for her, her lungs were continuing to worsen and so they needed to uh, meet with them to talk about the possibility of having to put her on pulmonary bypass. It, it's called ECMO, stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And I think the next thing I felt was relief because these people know what they're doing. I work with them on a day-to-day -day basis and I, I trust them with her. Kyla had meconium aspiration and had a little bit of a difficult delivery and she was put on ECMO and she did amazingly well. The day that she was coming off of ECMO, I was so excited. One of the exciting moments, um, you know, in the whole process of weaning her off from the ECMO is um, witnessing her first actual breath. As an expecting parent, you're excited to take all these, you know, videos and pictures. Um, I didn't expect to be taking a video of her first breath. But when she got off, she did great. Um, it was like clockwork after that. We thought she was gonna go home on oxygen and Kyla proved this wrong again. She went home in room air. Her getting home so soon wasn't just because of us, it was because of many, many people that were involved. The respiratory therapists were very important in helping us to get her off of the ventilators. And this would have never happened without lactation consultants. So human milk we know is the best thing for our babies, but in the NICU, human milk is even more important. It's almost like a medicine for them. Overall, it's a real comprehensive teamwork of not just medical, but your emotional, spiritual, and they have built an amazing foundation for every family to succeed. That's why this hospital is here. That's why these programs are here. They're being done not because it makes sense financially, but because it's part of what this hospital does. Parents never lose hope, and we as physicians should never lose hope. And I think the whole type of technologies and type of resources that we have available to us at Capulani so we can save lives like this, provide that hope. <laughs>